Well, Steph, the uh, first question is from Kareth Burke with NBC Sports Bay Area. Hey, Steph, how you doing? I'm good. Good. Um, I was wondering if you saw after the last game when you guys beat Memphis, Draymond was doing his interview on the court, and he said, I am a dog. Did you happen to see that video? Absolutely. So you know what Draymond actually said then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Two words, the two adjectives before. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I'm wondering, what is the power of Draymond knowing exactly how good he is, declaring that publicly, and then backing it up this season with his play? It's an environment of who he is, obviously, ultimate confidence. You know, not shy to you know, talk about it, not shy to, you know, let his presence be, be known and felt on and off the court. Um, but it's also a motivator for the, the team, and he knows, like, that confidence that he exudes on the court is contagious, you know, and his, his IQ, his competitiveness, uh, physicality out there, all those things that you see, you know, whether it shows up in the stat sheet or not, um, really ignites what we, what we do, um, especially on the defensive end. And you know, I credit him sometimes you need to, uh, in however way you want to proclaim who you think you are, um, in that, in that, in that respect. Um, cause I'm sure that, that motivates him for what he needs to do tomorrow. Um, you know, the rest of the playoffs, hopefully in the rest of his career. So how, how difficult would you say last season was for Draymond? I mean, we've talked about it a lot. It was obviously a, a tough year with injuries and all that. And you know, myself and Clayton being out there, Loon being hurt for a good amount of time. Uh, I mean, for better or worse, he was on an island a little bit. And there was a point in the, early in the season when he, I mean, with all the injuries that we had, we kind of knew where we were uh, going to end up as a team. and in the standings and, you know, you see when games matter, what type of uh, Draymond comes out and, and it's not just what he says to your, to your question, it's what he does out there on the floor. So uh, I know he's been, you know, patiently waiting an opportunity to be back on the stage that we're used to playing games that matter. And that goes to what I was talking about a couple months ago, or maybe not that long ago, but trying to make this season mean something down the stretch. Um, and we're in that position now where we're playing games with consequences. Thank you. The next question is from Chris Alvarez with ABC7. Hi, Steph. I just wonder, um, did you have a list or, or like going into the season, obviously you were hurt last year, motivation wise, do you make goals before a season? And then a quick follow up is, um, with Cannon, uh, did uh, what's better is Euro step or is shirt lift? The the Euro step for sure. That was uh, he did that on his own. We uh, we had to show him the, the flesh out celebration. He's good at imitating stuff, but the, the Euro step was was something on his own. Um, but for this season, I mean, it, the goal. Every year, it's it's not individual accolades. It's not a certain points per game or assists or anything like that. It's um, just being prepared physically, mentally to start a season and do the things that I know I can do well. Um, and usually, that takes care of itself in terms of production and um, you know continue to get better. So you know. Coming into the year, it's it's kind of vague for me and how I approach it because um, when I'm locked in on the process of how I get ready for a season and how I go through training camp and how I get ready for each game, I honestly get lost in that. And then the work shows itself throughout the course of the year. Um, I don't like to work you know, backwards where you, you set a goal and that's the only thing you're really focused on in terms of trying to hit numbers because you might sell yourself short if you do that. Um, you know, coming into a year. Next question is from Dan Wojcicki, uh, LA Times. Hey, Steph. Um, if this was a, a seven-game series, I'm, I'm sure people like myself and other pundits would break down matchups and 
and stuff like that. I'm, I'm curious, who do you think a one game series? Um, who's who, to whose advantage is that? And, and sort of what do you just generally make of the format? No, I, mean, I hope it's in our advantage in terms of, you know, it's the better team that night, you know, seven game series, obviously. Uh, every game can kind of take a different shape and um, you could win a game scoring 130, you could win a game scoring 90. Uh, it could be a defensive battle. It could be a, just an all out shootout, you know, foul trouble, matchup changes, all that type of stuff plays. But when it comes to a one game, you know, whoever plays better tomorrow night, you know, obviously, you know, should win. And, and that comes down to execution and, uh, you know, how locked in you are mentally to, to the task at hand, knowing what the other team's strengths are. Um, because you won't have as much time to adjust, um, you know, without, you know, games coming, coming uh, behind it. So they are at home. That does, you know, matter. But. Uh, I feel like we can come in gun slinging, ready to uh, start the game off hot and, and carry the momentum that we've had over the last, you know, 20 or so games. Next up, Wes Goldberg with the Bay Area News Group. Uh, hey, Steph. Um, you guys only played these Lakers once when they both had, when they had LeBron and AD available. And, and um, this is the first time you've played, you know, a Lakers team with LeBron in a playoff type of atmosphere, but given how much you guys have gone back and forth in the playoffs in the past, do you feel comfortable knowing what to expect tomorrow? Yeah, there's familiarity with with uh, them at full strength. I don't know if anybody else was missing outside of AD and Brown when we came down here and won the first time, but um, like you said, we we had a different identity when we when we came back here right, right after, it's right, after All Star break and right before, I can't remember. And uh, and then when they came to to the Bay, we were a different team than we are now too. So, kind of works both ways. Um, and you know, in that conversation, uh, they haven't seen this this group of eight that are, have have been out. You know, uh, playing at a high level and playing a different style. And to your point, we hadn't seen them healthy since uh, we came down here early in the season. So uh, back in January. So I think it's going to be um, who can who can study up the best and, and know what the certain patterns are. And then obviously we know we're undersized. Um, we got to play physical, got to play smart um, and, and lock up that paint to give ourselves a chance to let our speed take over and let, uh, you know, our style kind of win the night. Um, so it should be it should be fun. Next question is from Allie LaForce with DMT. Hey Steph, great to see you. What's up, Allie? How are you doing? Pretty good, thank you. Um, this challenge this year was different than any challenge you've ever faced, and you've faced plenty of challenges. Um, having to carry the load, the least deep team that you've had in your Warriors tenure, probably, and, and not only did you overcome all that, but you made history along the way. I'd love to know what you've learned about yourself um, in this year. It goes back to the work that I put in that it, it's, it's undefeated um, in terms of how I feel about my game and, and being able to adapt to different situations. So um, I pride myself on that. I was able to take advantage of the, the time off and rejuvenate the mind, body and soul and 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 also understand what the conversations and narratives were around myself, around our team, and um, you know, hear it, understand it, turn it into uh, a uh, a motivating factor in, in in how we approach the season. Um, but also, I just love playing basketball, and and when we got to a point where the joy took over, you know, whether we were winning or losing, just enjoying trying to figure it out and the challenges that we're, we're, we were facing, um, that's when the good momentum started to pick up. And, and uh, I talk about it a lot. And sometimes, you know, when you go through some, some, some hard times, you can lose that, that part of, of you know, your personality on the floor. Um, 
and, and getting that back was a huge factor for us as a team as well because, you know, it wasn't such a smooth, pretty, you know, uh, ride this entire season. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like I like how we've been able to adapt um, and, and, and get to this point in the year where we have something to play for. Much respect. Good luck tomorrow. Nick Friedel with ESPN. Ev, you've always been honest about the fact that you read and see everything. So I'm curious, after five or six years under the microscope, as you begin a playoff run, what is it like going in, knowing that so many people don't think you all can win and, and you're being viewed as underdogs for the first time in a long, long time? I think I talked about the other day where you could channel a little bit of that 2013-14 kind of um, experience when we we weren't being picked by anybody, um, especially in 13 in that first series with Denver. Now we have the experience of knowing how to win close games, um, knowing giving ourselves the best shot of, of this identity of, of this current team. Um, and that being proven over the last 20 games and, you know, carrying that momentum into, into tomorrow and hopefully beyond. Um, that's all that matters. And we have to lock in on that as a, as a group. So um, I hope we, I hope everybody on here is the, the chatter about, you know, even at this point, um, how we match up with LA or, potentially with, you know, a Phoenix or Utah, if we get through this play and tournament and all that. Um, nobody thought we were going to even be in this position. Uh, a lot of people had us way, way, way down the standings coming in after Clay got hurt. So there's a lot of things that we've already uh, flipped on its head to this point. So we might as well keep going. Next, we have uh, Kendra Andrews. Hey, Steph, um, we've talked a lot about how you have grown, how Draymond has grown over the course of this year, dealing with just a different circumstance for you guys. But how have you seen Steve grow as a coach, developing these young players, which he hasn't really had to do since coming to Golden State? Uh, I think he's done a good job. And, and it, it seems like there's been three different, three or four different seasons within one where um, now you kind of come in with this narrative of, you know, incorporating the young guys, uh, obviously with, with with Wise and and some new cast of characters with Kelly, and um, you know, trying to figure out how we all fit together. And you have some injuries, and you have to kind of adapt from there. And you come back from All Star break, and you, know, you have this mindset that we can go on a run. And he kept saying it over and over again, um, but we never could find any true momentum in that. Um, you know, and then some more injuries and COVID protocols and all that type of stuff. Then you get to an eight man rotation and it's like, all right, this is what we got. Let's roll and trying to find a way to, uh, put us in the best position to be successful with what we had. And, you know, you go, what, I think we went like 15 and five or something down the stretch in the last 20. And, you know, you're in a position where you're in the eighth seed and, and have two two cracks again to a playoff uh, scenario. So staying in the moment is huge because things change so fast throughout this season. Um, and, you know, nobody could have predicted what this ride would have looked like on a different, you know, emotional roller coaster, uh, you know, turns that we went through. But to be in this position where we're in a film session this morning, game planning for a playoff Esque matchup and you know doing a huge deep dive. We missed those uh, those moments and those those experiences, and it's been you know two long years to even get back to that type of momentum. So uh, excited about just being in this position and what it took to get here. Next question is from Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey Steph, I know we've talked about this before, but just wanted to get a little deeper on the info here. When you worked, especially this off season, on building up your strength in your upper body, what did you work on the most? Was there anything that you just hated but did it anyway because you knew it would help you? Um, it was uh, a lot of just breaking down each body part and especially from the core and out and trying to 
maximize, you know, the, the time that I had. Um, I won't bore you with specific exercises, but it was a lot of work, uh, a lot of two-a-days, a lot of, you know, grinding. And, and to your point, I was joked that the off season is way harder than the regular season because, you know, the intensity that you have to get to and the daily commitment that you have to get to when you're not playing games. And um, there are a lot of uh, sessions that you do hate because they're just that hard uh, of work. But you know that it's going to mean something when, it, when, the, when the lights are bright and when you know it matters most. So we do it and the great ones know how to continue to do it and continue to double down on it and continue to use that as, as the motivating factor. Um, to keep getting better. Uh, sounds all cheesy and cliche, but it's, you can ask anybody that's been in that position, they'd say, hopefully they'd say the same thing. Um, that's how you separate yourself at this level. Well, I'm not gonna ask you like how many lunges you did, but was there like a piece of equipment they had you lifting or working with that's just visual so that people understand kind of what you were doing to achieve this? Uh, they make you lift a watermelon up and down? I mean, you know. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't have any too many, uh, uh, props or nothing like that. It was mainly, it's really hard. I guess the amount of time we spent in the, uh, in the uh, underneath the chase center with no natural light. Okay. It was, uh, it was a lot of hours grinding in there too. So <laughs> sacrificing the summer hours being inside first world problems. I can make that sound really dramatic. He didn't even see the sun. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> Next question is from Anthony Slater with The Athletic. So if you mentioned doing a deep dive on the Lakers, uh, they got the number one defense. Uh, how much more difficult is it against a team like this that really kind of knows you guys to, to do some of your normal action? Um, and just what kind of challenge do they present defensively against you guys? Well, we played against Braun plenty of times, and he knows kind of some of our sets, and there's – a lot of experience there that goes both ways in terms of how he, you know, tries to get into his actions and get getting everybody involved and obviously being a scoring threat. So there's a lot of familiarity there. You know, in a game like this, it just comes down to execution in terms of knowing they're a great defensive team. And if you're not aggressive and don't play with force and get into your spots and setting great screens and cutting hard, you're going to play right into their hands because they're extremely talented and long and and uh, and smart on the defensive end, so um, you know that's on us to start the game off on the on the right note of attention to detail and and being organized. Um, but then it also goes into the full game plan, you know, that we have, and and you know you got to play defense, you got to be smart on on both ends of the floor, um, and whoever's you know matchups in front of you, take it personally. Um, you know, total team defense, and for us, that'll be the success that we're ever going to have tomorrow um, if we lock in from the jump and and uh, and play our brand of basketball, but do it with force. Do you expect them to go Davis at center a good amount? I don't know. Uh, we got we've talked about that. We talked about a lot of different matchups they can put out there, you know, especially with their front court. They have three or four options that they can. Put together, and they're obviously huge with Braun, AD, and Drummond at the uh, in that starting lineup. So, I mean, there's a lot of different looks that they can throw out, but the game plan doesn't change that much. Um, knowing that you know whoever they out there, they're probably gonna be bigger than us. And the last question for Steph will come from Mark Medina with the USA Today. Hey, Steph, good to see you. Were you what, 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 you got to show everybody your shirt. You're going to be disappointed. It's all sweatshirts. That's it's nice to see you. Very disappointing. I apologize. Hey, uh, LeBron was touting you MVP the other day. Uh, but there's a good number of Warrior fans that are questioning his motives and think there's some sort of gamesmanship with that. How do you look at that? <laughs> uh, I, I love the uh, – no matter if it's him, it's me, whoever it is, there's always uh, another element of ana analytics or analyzing what we say and how we say it and when we say it. So Bron's no uh, no stranger to that, neither are we. Um, 
obviously I'm appreciative of, he knows when he says something, people pay attention. So for him to speak on my MVP candidacy is uh, definitely, I respect him for it. I appreciate it. Um, we all know as competitors though, when the lights are on, I can talk about how great he is till I'm blue in the face and he can do the same. Doesn't change how we approach, uh, you know, that, that competition when we're out there. Um, and I won't be giving him a pass because he likes the way I played this year and, and vice versa. So it's, it's great for uh, the entertainment value of, of what we do. And uh, I, I, I kind of love the chatter because it's, 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 it's hilarious and it's, it's awesome all at the same time, but it'll make for a good show tomorrow. All right, thank you, Steph. Sure. Thank you, sir.